Hey everybody, Douglas Blair Roberts here, the Super Vader 400 here, and of course, Mr. The Fanboy here, back for another video and another review. And as you can see by the title above, this is my late, out of date, short review and rant on what was also, along with TNA Slim Versary 2018, one of the greatest professional wrestling shows this year and one of the greatest professional wrestling shows of all time that is the 2018's very first independent show ind all big major budgeted independent show all in promoted by Cody Rhodes promoted by Cody Rhodes the Young Bucks and Omega and boy was this an awesome show. I once again wanted to do a video giving my thoughts on this event because I kept hearing about this awesome event earlier. Um, this year I kept saying to myself, what is this all in? Then, I, then in um, June, I mean, then in July, I finally got to see what, what this was. And I'm like, oh, this event sounds good, especially um, I initially didn't care much for the card. There were only two matches I wanted to see. That was the Cody. Rose Magnus NWA Heavyweight Championship match and Kozuchiko's Okada ma match with Marty Scroll with uh, Marty Scroll. One to review the event the day it happened, but I got the dates mixed up. I thought this would be late September, like around now. But this was early September, September fifth, I think. September third or fifth. Fifth and and like I said, way too much action to call way too much action to call and way too much wrestling on this show way too much um wrestling on this show after the nwa heavyweight title match in okada's match with scroll i kind of stopped caring i kind of stopped caring about the event but i went back and watched the rest of the event too and those matches could have been at the beginning or some of them could have been taken out one match that definitely could have that i felt definitely could have been taken out was the lethal flip gordon match and that's the rant portion of this um review review right here was too much too much too, too many too many matches too much wrestling and way too many um tag team matches and matches that just didn't add much to the um show but this show was awesome i love the venue man the venue was like a cross between wcw 2000 and 2001 wcw in the late 80s early 90s and um and um and the classic Jim Crockett National Wrestling Alliance pay-per-views which preceded WCW. That's what this whole event, Mega Spectacular event, reminded me of. It had the look of that, but it had the booking of a Ring of Honor New Japan and New Japan pay-per-view, which means way too many matches and matches that could have been dropped off the card. I also love their epic theme song, which you're about to hear right now. For my intro but this right here was an awesome pay-per-view and one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time and definitely one of the greatest pay-per-views of this year like i said on my super beta 400 channel you'll get this short review right here on my main channel um mr the fanboy you'll get i'll review the fights from this event with that being said let's get this review started right now So you think that you got me Beat me down, beat me down Do you think you're on top? Well, I'm not where you left me I've been picking up steam And I pick myself up I'm stronger this time
Everybody, the Super Vader 400 here, Douglas Blair Roberts here, back for another review. And as you can see by the title above, this is part two of my review of the wrestling pay per view All In, which happened September 3rd of um, this year. Um, I meant, like I said in part one of this review, I wanted to review the show when it happened, but I got the dates mixed up, and I've just been tied up with various other things, and I never got around to reviewing it. But since this won't take long, I decided to hurry up and try to get this review out the way, because I'm already late. This is also like, this is my late out of date review of All In. This is also, actually no, this is my late out of view review slash rant, because I got a couple of problems with this show, despite how much I love this show, I got a couple of problems with it. I had a couple of problems with it, but um, I decided to hurry up and get this review out the way because this is just me talking about the show event and matches themselves. Like I said on Mr. The Fanboy channel, I'm going to review some of the matches individually because it's hard to remember every move, every, every portion of the show and every move that happened in the match for the entire show, especially when the show is good and you're blown away with excitement. With that being said, let's get started right now. So like I said, I wanted to review it then, but then I kept putting it off. My main two attractions to this event were um, the Cody Rhodes, Magnus, end up, Nick Aldis, Magnus, NWA Heavyweight Championship match, and of course, Okada and Marty um, Scroll, which this right here brings into my rant. After Okada's match, and damn sure after Nick Aldis and Cody Rhodes' match, I really didn't care much for anything else on the pay-per-view. I felt, um, 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 Jay Lethal and Flip Gordon, Jay Lethal and Flip Gordon and, um, Omega and Pentagon, and Omega and Pentagon, all, both of those, and Hangman Page's matches, those three matches, and Lethal and Gordon's matches the most. Those could have been removed from the show or just been removed moved to the pre-show. Moved to the pre-show. And maybe the Battle Royal, which I'm hearing about, should have been on um should have been on the show. Um should have been on the show. But first, before I get to the matches, let's talk about the event itself. I love the venue. The venue reminded me of WCW Fall Brawl, Halloween Havoc. And Super Brawl Revenge 2001, WCW 2000 and 2001, and WCW late 80s, early 90s, WCW with elements from the National Wrestling Alliance, Jim Crockett promotions, and the various territories of the past. That's what this event reminded me of. And according to Wikipedia, this was the first event since 1993, 1993 to sell 10,000 um to sell 10,000 tickets and it had a huge number of attendants in 11,263 that's good for an indie for an indie show most indie shows would kill to get that right there um and i also loved the theme song you heard in the intro in the webcam portion of this review all in by downstate downstate is instantly one of my all-time favorite bands and they perform a lot of they perform a lot of songs for for various um they perform a lot of songs like they perform the avengers earth's mightiest hero united we united they stand song they per, they, they they provide um the miz and dolph ziggler's songs and of course Co and cody's rose Co and cody rhodes's um song they also perform alex riley say it to my face so a lot of my favorite wrestling themes and songs are performed by this band. And of course, um 
Um, along with the matches on this show, I loved the star power involvement on this show, on this show, and the reaction from various other wrestlers in the business. Um, you got um, you got Stephen Amell wrestling on this show. I hated his WWE. I hated his WWE SummerSlam match from three years ago, but his match with Daniels here was awesome. You had was awesome. You had um, you had in Cody Rhodes' corner. Not only did you have Randy Rose, but you had Diamond Dallas play, Diamond Dallas Page, Glacier, Tommy Dreamer, and for Nick Aldis, you had Jeff Jarrett, Samuel Shaw, Sean Devari, and indie wrestler Tim Storm. Then, of course, um, in I didn't watch this match, but I'm on Wikipedia. Jay Lethal had Lanny Poffo, legendary Lanny Poffo, in his corner for his match with Flip. Um, for his match with um Flip Gordon. So yeah, love the um star power. Then let's talk about um. Well, before I get that, let's get to the matches. Then we'll talk about the reaction from the wrestlers outside of this event. So um, let's get to the event itself. Like I said, the first. The first, the first three matches, the first three to four matches. I didn't watch the fee, the fee, the four corners survival match, but the first four matches and Okada's match with Scroll were my all-time favorites. You started to show off with Matt Cross debuting a brand new look, debuting a brand new look, taking on MJF in an awesome opener. With Matt Cross winning with the Shooting Star Press after an awesome fight. Then you had Daniels taking on Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell, he improved so much since that god-awful SummerSlam 2015 match he had with Cody Rhodes and Flip Gordon. I mean, not Cody Rhodes and um, Adrian Neville from three years ago. Three years ago, he was he was like a pro in this fight. One of the and I usually hate celebrity involvement in wrestling, but this right here was one of my all-time favorites. I loved. This match, Daniels made Stephen Amell look strong in this match. Look strong in this match, and Daniels won with the best moonsault ever. Like I said, I didn't watch the females four corners match, but I'm happy to hear Tessa Blanker defeated Chelsea Green, Doctor Britt ba Baker, D D M D M D, and of course Madison Rain for Madison Rain. Now let's get to the match I want to see: Cody Rhodes. Versus Nick Aldis, one of the best matches of this year, and one of the greatest NWA Heavyweight Championship matches of all time. Love what um um Billy Corrigan is doing. Billy Corrigan and Nick Aldis were doing with the National Wrestling Alliance, and now Cody Rhodes has brought his name to the brand. Brought his name um to the brand um. Sucks to see Nick Aldis lose, but I was really happy for Cody at this event and love this match. An awesome match. And like I said, the legends, Diamond Dallas plays Glacier, Tommy Dreamer, they all got involved. They all got involved with, of course, Diamond Dallas Page hitting a diamond cutter to Sean Devari. Sean Devari. Um... Then, of course, Kenny Omega defeated Pentagon Zero despite not caring for this match. This right here was an awesome match, man. This right here was an awesome match. Now let's get to the last match I cared about, and that was Kozuchika Okada taking on the villain, um, the villain, um, Marty Scroll. Good back and forth match. One of the more memorable portions of the match was when Marty Scroll did his sick finger break maneuver onto Okada. And Okada still managed to jump and hit a beautiful drop kick onto Marty Scroll. And I think um Okada And I think um Okada won with two Rainmakers. Okada won the match with two Rainmakers to scroll, reversing his finger maneuver again as scroll tried his finger break maneuver again then the main event you had a pretty good main event despite not caring for this fight that was the golden elite kota abushi matt jackson and nick jackson taking on bandito 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 and ray phoenix and ray mysterio and ray mysterio in a phenomenal six-man lucha libre style fight 
Lucha Libre um, style fight. What was the finish again? Um, what was the finish again? Um, oh yeah, the Young Bucks performed the Meltzer driver onto Bandito to win the match. Like I said, this is just me talking briefly about the matches. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to review all of the match. I'm going to review some of the matches on my Mr. The Fanboy channel. Talk about, talk more in depthly about what happened in the match. Talk about my, mem talk about the memorable moves. So, um, yeah, what an awesome match and, uh, what an awesome event, man. The greatest event, what the greatest event of this year, and the greatest event not produced by any of the major promotions that's WWE, Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, and of course, New Japan. New Japan. So, um, yeah, Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, all, um, organized this shows together. I like it when the wrestlers organize events and write their own storylines, giving it a more realistic, um, feel. And let's talk about the praise from the wrestlers outside of this event. You had Taz and Daniel Bryan praising the, the event production and his matches. You had Dwayne The Rock Johnson praising Cody for his championship win two days after um after um the event after the after the um um event. Dave Meltzer um mm, Dave Meltzer gave gave this a positive view despite the main event being cut short. Um, John Moore of ProWrestling.net. This was my only criticism that the show suffered from way too many matches, way um too many um matches. So um yeah, one of the best shows of all time. And um I haven't watched yet, but another criticism is is Vince Russo. I heard him trying to talk crap. About this paper, you haven't watched that video yet, but um, I usually agree with Russo when he talks about WWE and wrestling these days, but not here. This right here is one of the best shows of all time. One of the best shows of all time. So, um, yeah, this was all in. I'm gonna be reviewing the matches on my main on my other channel, Mr. The Fanboy. All right, I'm done. Time to hit my music. We are all in.